Today we're going to talk about how to transfer files from the field to the office and the office to the field using a data collector, a hotspot, an FTP client on the data collector, an FTP client on the PC, and a free FTP server. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is go to Drive HQ, as you can see, www.drivehq.com. In the upper right hand corner, there's a sign up tab. Make a username, put in your email address, password, double check password, company name, accept the membership agreement, take the free sign up. When you do this, it's going to email you a verification. Open the email, click on the verification, and your account is active. Pretty simple. Next thing we'll do is we will download the FileZilla FTP solution. If you're running a 64-bit version of Windows, you will click on this link. 32-bit version, you'll click on this link. When you go to their download page, this is what it looks like. I recommend you don't click on the download FileZilla client big green icon. It has some additional software that they're going to try and install on your PC. If you go down here and click on the show additional download options, this is where you get to the program only. And again, here's a 64-bit version, here's a 32-bit version. Once you've done this, you are ready to run the FileZilla free PC program after you've installed it. We'll go over here to the Site Manager enter in this information that you got when you configured your DriveHQ account. The host is ftp.drivehq.com. It's the FTP protocol. Here's your encryption option. Your login type is normal. Here's the username that you just created and the password. Once you've done this, you can click on connect. If you've ever used an FTP client before, this will look familiar. If you have not, notice that right here it says local site. This left side of the screen is showing you the file system on your PC. Over here it says remote site. This is the file system on the FTP server somewhere in the world. We don't really care where it is. They've already put a directory structure in here to aid in organization. So we'll just go right into my documents. And then over here on the hard drive, I've got two files, a demo ASCII file and a demo DXF file. I'm going to press the shift key and highlight both of those. And then just drag those into the empty directory listing window and you will see that both of those files will be transferred to the FTP server. That's all there is to it and if you want to copy them back you just click on them again and drag them back to a different directory. Oh, let's say we'll put them in this temp directory right here. As you can see, I just copied them back from some server in the world somewhere to a different directory on the same hard drive. So now I have two copies of those files. Anyway, now we're going to disconnect from this server because we're going to use this same username and password to connect on our HC1. 
which you can view the screen here through this little program. Um, I've already installed our VX FTP client that we downloaded from his website. I'll show you that in just a moment. But if we start this program up, you will see, oh, well, here's where you get it right here. You'll see that it is a one time fee of $24.95 per data collector. It has a 30 day evaluation license. So we can click, we're not going to register it yet, and go on through and see how to use this. Here's where you put the information again, just like you used over here in the FileZilla, the host name. On this one, you pick FTP PC TCP for the type of FTP server, username, password, initial directory, you can leave blank. When using an FTP client on a data collector going through a hotspot, you have to click use private network. Okay, so once you've entered all this information, click on save and click on cancel the first time. We have to go over here to file, options, and make sure that the passive mode checkbox is checked and that the transfer mode is set for binary. You also have to put your email address up here if you're ever going to connect to an FTP server with an anonymous login because they always request your email address as the password. So once we've made sure that our settings match these, we can go back to our connection box and hit connect. Now just like with the FileZilla client, you'll notice that we have a remote tab which shows what's on the FTP server. And as you can see, the two files that we moved up there from the PC show up through this FTP client. We click on the local tab on our data collector. We can go to where Crossen keeps their data files. And I made a directory called import. And we will move these files one at a time. from the FTP server to our data collector. As you can see, it's not as fast as the PC, but it's getting there. We've already received one of the files. Not only did we just receive it, we received it in a predefined location. Whereas when people were using email to move these files back and forth, it's very cumbersome. This is pretty clean and efficient, and we are done. So, just to see how cool we can make this, let's go into our crossing on this data collector create a job and import those two files and we'll be ready to put some stakes in the ground. This is for people who've never taken the time to learn how to import ASCII files and DXF files. We're going to select a new job. We're going to call it demo. We do not want to create a point one. 
because we've already got a point one. We're going to continue without connecting to the last device. Go to the import tab, hit import ASCII, use the select button to go find our file. Tell it to look for ASCII files instead of instead of text files. And I'd like to think that we just read that file in. Oh, there it goes. So I just read in my 13 points. Now we have to go to the graphics screen to read in the DXF file. Go under File, DXF in, Import DXF. And voila, we imported our line work. There's our point numbers, our elevations, our descriptions. And we are now ready to continue to do additional Kogo or set our robot up and start staking or take our GPS unit and do a localization and start staking or locating. That concludes the instructional part of this video series. I hope that you found it educational and I hope that it will solve your problem. You can see how easy it is to send files to and from a data collector now using FTP. I'll get this out of the way and get this out of the way. We'll go back to our browser and, and show you once again where I got all these products. Here's your FileZilla. This is the one I left out before. This is Cambridge Corporation's website. CambridgeVX.com we're on the Windows Mobile tab. If you'll scroll down to the bottom, the product that we were using is VXFTP. Click on that. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and select VXFTP.zip. As you can see, he just created this one. He tweaked it for the Windows Mobile 6.5 community, that would be us. We are very grateful. It solves a problem that was created by the old, FT, uh, the old email client no longer being supported. And I think that $24.95 is a small price to pay one time per data collector to be able to send files back and forth to the office as efficiently as you can now. And on a side note, if you are in the office using the Wi-Fi in your office, you can upload and download files using the FTP client, which means you don't have to have your party chief standing in line at an upload-download computer. All you have to do is have somebody put them on the FTP server as soon as they make them, and whenever anybody's ready, whether they're in the field or in the office, they can upload download their files, multiple people at the same time. Thank you very much, and I hope this helps you be 